Today, I'm going to take a look at this brand new Evolution Chop Saw. Now, this is model number S380 CPS. Now, this took quite a beating on its way to my house. You can see this corner is damaged. You can see this corner is damaged. This corner here, you can see, took a really big impact and totally accordioned. Um, it's, it's starting to rip open on the end there. So, fingers crossed, I hope this came in one piece. Um, if it's actually functional, that will be a testament to how well this is packaged. For a box like this to have all these compression um, impact zones and the product inside to actually survive, that means it's packaged very well. So it's probably totally fine. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what is inside. I have been wanting this saw for years. I've been looking at these saws. And so I decided, hey, it's time for me to get one. Let's call these guys up, see if they're interested in working with me. And they were. Anyways, sorry I'm taking time. This is a, a chip tray. I like it. Currently, over here, I have a metal chop saw, and it doesn't have a chip tray to catch all the metal shavings. Um, currently, the metal shavings go all over the shop. It's a little uh, jaw clamp to hold a uh, square tube. This is... Uh, this is 11 gauge. This is heavy duty. This isn't thin sheet metal. Um, this is very thick sheet metal. And this is the blade. All right, next part is the big part. So I'm going to pull it off. right off the bat I'm able to hold this whole entire saw with a handle right on top that's nice that means if you're gonna move it around the shop say bring it to your welding table take it away from your welding table you've got a really robust handle right there so first impression um, this is nice I thought this would be uh, a little more janky than it is Get some of this stuff off here. Let's give it a look. I really like this casting. Oh, wow. But can I have this box? Yes, you can have the box. We've got, this is a really nice heavy duty 300 volt, 14 gauge SJ power cable. It says a pin right back here that allows it to lock into position. I really like that. Also, this is a cast aluminum base, um, and it is it is beefy. I mean, we're talking three quarters of an inch solid steel or solid aluminum back here on the joint that is a really nice machine joint it's got thrust washers really big spring oh man that slides that slides a lot smoother than this guy over here and it's an acme thread that saw does not have an acme thread that's just a plain thread this actually has an acme screw so you're going to get a lot more clamping force you have a lot more surface area that's nice very smooth I like how they curve the edges I actually myself design machines for a living so when people you know just do everything cheap and square and ugly I'm not a fan of that I think machines should look nice um, nobody buys a Ferrari and says well it gets the job done um, Oh yeah, so even on this guard, they have uh, dimples and patterns stamped into it. That's going to give it more rigidity. Um, yeah, so they've got this saw here. It does accept the 15-inch blade, but I didn't buy it because it comes with 
comes with the 14 inch blade. So I'm gonna wear out the 14 inch blade first. This is a really heavy duty cast steel uh, clamp. Oh man. So you've got, definitely have some play there in the 45 degree pin. Um, but I like the adjustable handle. You can just, it's spring loaded. So, you know, whatever is comfortable for you. Um, there's a pin here with some predetermined areas. And it looks like this entire thing can be unscrewed and moved forward. Um, but I'll probably keep it at the very far back. I don't, I don't have any reason. Oh, right here are some instructions explains a little bit how you can move the fence. There's different holes for the fence. Um, I'll probably just leave it where it is. So when you clamp that, this is a very heavy duty fence. Um, I really like this. It's a casting. It has gussets. Um, it is super rock solid. On the flip side, over here, my Hitachi saw only has a thin sheet metal. Now, it does have gussets stamped into it, but it is not anywhere close to as rigid as this. This also is adjustable without any tools. Um, so, I like that. Oh, if you twist this, it stays and it doesn't lock, so you could dial in any angle you want. Now, if you rotate it, it's not locked and it will snap in to position. Now, when it snaps in, there is about a degree of play. I don't care. I bought myself a really cool digital angle finder on Amazon. I'll put a link to that in the description just in case you're interested. Um, I'll probably do a different video on that, but I'm gonna use that if I wanna be super precise. Um, I don't think I'm gonna depend on this. There is a scale down here with laser etched numbers that's adjustable, but there's no like arrow that says, hey, you're here. But in, at the end of the day, if you want to be very precise with your me ang angle measurements, you're not going to use the quick features to do that. And you guys understand that. You're going to buy a digital uh, protractor and you're going to bring the blade down and then you're going to line it up. You're going to tighten it down. Man, that is a really, really nice handle. It's cast aluminum and it's, you can wrench on that. Man, I like that. That's a nice handle. Also, on the downstroke, there is a there's an adjustment bolt here for the maximum downstroke so you're not going too far down and cutting into you know your chip tray let's check out the chip tray let's put it in also there are slotted bolt down holes if you want to bolt this to a table now i'm going to sit this next to my uh table here and bolt it not bolt it but just set it here like this also there's an allen wrench in here and it's held in with a rubber grommet so it won't vibrate loose. Um, there are no rubber grommets on my Hitachi. It just sets in there and it rattles, makes lots of noise, and sometimes it can fall out onto the floor. This actually is, that rubber grommet is, has an interference fit, so it's not gonna fall out onto the floor. Um, oh, there are rubber feet on the bottom. That's nice. So, uh, now the rubber feet are round and they're dropping into the holes of my welding table, but it's no big deal. I just have to lift up a little bit when I rotate. So I'll put the tray in here. Oh, look at that. So it's spring loaded. I've heard that earlier models were not spring loaded. So this would like vibrate and make a lot of chatter, but there's a spring on this end. And there's an Allen wrench here for you to turn and lock that into position. Honestly, uh, uh, a thumb screw would be nice. I don't know why I need a wrench to do that. 
whatever. I think this part here is actually steel. That way, you know, it can hold up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the blade on and we'll do some cuts. So there's a button over here you press down so you can release. Okay, so it comes with the steel cutting blade, which is good. Um, 66 teeth, 14 inches, has a one inch arbor. So part of me wants to put the big ones on. Basically the larger arbors just grip farther out. They might affect the resonant frequency, but I don't know. I didn't read any of the instructions, any of the instructions so maybe I should have. And it looks like there's a guard, yep. So put the guard down. And this is not a thumb screw, by the way. It actually is an Allen, and I suggest actually making it tight. Because this is very handy. And so far, all of the major components use the same Allen wrench, which is really nice. Okay, the easiest way to get this squared up at 90 degrees is uh, just to put a speed square on it. And with this clamped in the downward position, you can still grab onto this handle and tighten it down. Some of the features I like about this is that, you know, they, they added some curves, some, some chamfers. In the past, I've seen these and they're very blocky. Um, they're not very cosmetically appealing. And I know a lot of guys say, hey, that doesn't matter. But you know what? I appreciate engineers and designers who take the time to make their stuff look good. Because yes, it does matter. That creates the first impression. When you look at this, you look at some of the other ones, you're like, wow, that looks better built than some of the competition. So I do like the fact that it looks nice. So this here is for cutting a uh, square tubing. I think it just slides over top and it kind of floats. So I have some two inch by two inch, quarter inch thick wall tubing. And we are just gonna cut a chunk of this off. And I'm gonna time it, and we're gonna see how long this takes to cut through this versus my Hitachi um, saw. One thing I noticed right off the bat, the ability to uh, clamp this thing down, I mean, I can get a ton of pressure with two fingers. This lead screw is much, much better than the normal threaded rod on my Hitachi abrasive saw. Right off the bat, I noticed that. All right, first time I've ever cut anything. this I can touch it I can hold this look look at that shiny this is cold this is cold to the touch look at that I can put my hand on the cut if you've ever used an abrasive saw and look I got a tiny little burr right there at the very end where it just ripped it off um, but this is incredible it was like, what, 15 seconds to cut through two inch by two inch quarter thick wall tubing? Uh, mind is absolutely blown. Um, I'm a believer. <laughs> this is incredible. So that's, that is huge. Uh, I didn't, I'm not even going to, I know I said I was going to do a comparison, but let's be honest, guys. There's no comparison that needs to be done here. First of all, when I go to cut this with my abrasive saw, it's probably a two minute ordeal and it's glowing red hot. It's spewing sparks all over my shop. And then this is so hot, I have to pick it up with uh, my blacksmithing tongs 
and then I can't even touch or use this. And then I have to go over to the bands or to the grinder and clean this off because it smeared the material. That's just a beautiful cut. All right, so if you're interested in an Evolution product, use promo code BECK, B-E-C-K. Coupon code BECK will save you 5% off your order. And that includes sale items, because I tested it. I went and found some items that were on sale. I put them in my cart. I put in coupon code BECK, and it took an additional 5% off. Now, they may change that in the future, but as of now, Coupon code BECK gets you 5% off any Evolution product. It doesn't have to be this one. It could be any Evolution product on their website. So that helps me out a little bit, and it helps you out a little bit. So it's not a massive amount, but hey, every little bit helps, doesn't it? So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions about this saw, leave them in the comment section below because I'm going to be putting this thing through the paces. Um, a little uh, secret I just ordered uh, well uh, over $1,000 of tube steel, and I'm going to start selling tube steel on my website. Um, I had a lot of customers of mine say, hey, I needed some tube steel for your project, the, uh, the plans I bought, but my local shop will only sell me a 20-foot bar. Where do I get smaller amounts? Well, I'm going to be that guy for everybody who can't get small amounts, short bars, uh, I'm going to sell it by the inch. It's going to be on the website. So if you need inch and a half by inch and a half square tubing with quarter inch wall, check the Bex Armory website and uh, you can buy small quantities there without breaking the bank. I will be cheaper than everybody else on the internet and that's a promise. Um, so if you find a place cheaper, you let me know. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I will bring you continual updates um, on this saw. I'm going to be using this saw for years to come and I'll do periodic updates. You'll randomly see it on the channel and I'll let you know how it's working out. Um, so that's all I got. Thanks a lot. See you later.